Hello and thank you for joining us for a tutorial on how to use ArbiterSports.com and how to navigate through the Arbiter process in order to umpire with Old Dominion Umpires Association. As we begin the Arbiter process, um, the first thing that you will receive when you register for Arbiter and we include you into the group um, is you will receive an email that looks something like this. It'll say, welcome to Arbiter. As a subject line, it will come from arbitersports.com, messaging at arbitersports.com. And it will contain uh, what you need to do to sign in. It'll contain a link to the website. It'll contain your user ID or your username, which will be your email address with which you registered for Old Dominion Umpires Association. And it will give you a password uh, in this space here where it says don't remember your password reset your link you will get an actual uh, 10 or 15 digit password that you will then copy and paste into the Arbiter sign-in screen. The Arbiter sign-in screen looks like this it's arbitersports.com and you'll type in your email address and your password that was sent to you via email and then you will click sign in it will give you the ability to um, reset your email or your password and then you can create your own password. Once you log in you will be automatically taken to your schedule page um, that looks like this. If not you can just click schedule and it will show up. Most of you will already find that you have been invited to training events and it will look something like this on your schedule page. If you don't sign in, uh, if you don't automatically go to the schedule page, you'll probably go to what's called the main page, which is our, our splash page, our landing page for our group. And you will see various announcements that are posted uh, by assigners or administrators regarding, for example, here, when our next meeting is, um, who your board liaisons are, some links for the Arbiter Sports app, uniform information, uh, we'll have hot weather information, we'll have field closure information, those kind of things in the announcements section. Over here in the upper right hand corner, you'll have your name and there will be probably a blank gray circle there. And if you click on that, you can go to my account. It will show you all of the pertinent information for your account. Uh, first name, last name, uh, address, all that kind of neat stuff. In the upper right hand corner over here you'll see your a blank circle if you haven't already put a picture in there. We'd like for you to put a headshot photo in there that's relatively current that shows you in some sort of uh, moderately professional or at least business attire. Uh, we'd prefer that you not be wearing hats or shirts that advocate tobacco or alcohol. Uh, generally schools frown upon that and school administrators can see this page or they can see your photo when they see you on an assignment. In this lower section you'll be able to make any address correction changes that you may have. Um, you'll also need to put your social security number in there as that's what's um, reported through taxes and that kind of thing. You'll be 1099 for all your income through Arbor Sports. By clicking on the schedule tab as I said you'll see everything that is on your schedule. That will include events and games. You can control what this looks like by going over here to display and clicking list view, view by day, week, and month. We would highly recommend that you stick with list view as that will show you everything that is on your schedule at one time. You can also change how this looks by changing right here where the filter is. You can also change how this looks by going uh, this week, last month, next 30 days, all that kind of thing. Generally, usually, normally, we would recommend that you just put it on future, click apply filter, and just leave it in this mode right here. The most important part of Arbiter is notifying your assigner when you cannot work and when you can work. We do this through the blocks tab in Arbiter. 
For assigning purposes, you always want to let your assigner know when you are available. If you do not wish to work on a given day or if you're unable to work on a given day, whether it's your birthday, your wife's birthday, your kid's birthday, your anniversary, you're on vacation, it doesn't matter what the reason is. If you cannot work on a particular day and you cannot work the entire day, what we ask you to do is block the entire day. In order to block the entire day, it's very simple. You go down here to action, you click the block all day radio button, and you simply then click the day that you want to block. It will turn it red, and it will show down here at the bottom that you are blocked on August 11th, 2020. You are blocked from receiving anything on that particular day. A solid red square indicates a full day block, meaning that from midnight in the morning to midnight at night, you are unavailable to umpire. If you have previously blocked a day and you now find yourself available to work, you can clear your block simply by going to the same set of radio buttons, highlighting click clear blocks, and clicking on that same day and it will go away. You can also clear the block by scrolling down here to the bottom, that red X, where it has that red X, you can simply click that red X and the block will also go away. If a day on the calendar is white, that means that you are communicating with your assigner that you are completely available and willing to work an assignment that you get on that day. You do not have the ability to decline assignment once it is given to you. We manage our availability and our assignments through the blocking process. Again, if your day is red, you will not receive a game that day. If your game, if your day is white, you may receive a game that day, but you're not certainly guaranteed to receive a game that day. The other way we can block is a part day block. For example, if you work from seven in the morning until three in the afternoon, Monday through Thursday, you can set a part day block. You do this by going to the part day, block part day radio button right here, and you can set the time range from whenever you have to leave in the morning to go to work until the time that you are able to leave work. Do not try to estimate what time you can work a game. Simply put in this block the time frame that you can leave work. The system will know where you work by zip code in just a moment when we take you to travel limit. Once you have set your from and to time range, you can again Click the day that you wish to partially block, and it will turn pink. Notice that that is not the same dark red. It's a pink. The pink box indicates that you are only blocked for a time period. If you scroll down here to the bottom, you will see that you are blocked from 7 in the morning until 3 p.m. that day. If you work Monday through Thursday, as I said, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on a regular basis, then you can block a whole group of days or partially block a whole group of days at one time. In order to do this, to do this you click on part day block, select your time frame, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then you can select the days of the week at which that block applies. You can then Click on the calendar and you can select the month or the time frame that we're talking about. In this case, I'm going to select from the 3rd of August, 31st of August, so that as you can see, I'm going to block from the 3rd of August to the 31st of August, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm then going to click apply and you'll notice that every day, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, from the 3rd to the 31st, turns pink at one time. Click on View Schedule. I have now blocked every one of those days 
for the same time, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can do the same process to clear the blocks by repeating the process, clear blocks, selecting your, to, your from day and your to day, clicking apply, and they will go away. If you recall, when we blocked the full day, it showed up dark red. When we blocked the partial days, it shows up pink. But if you notice, if you go to this, this day, I really have two blocks. If you adjust your blocks from a part day to a whole day, or a whole day to a part day, or perhaps you've adjusted your part day from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. to a different time frame for the same day, you can get what we call double blocks. This happens with people who change their schedule on a regular basis. And when they set partial blocks over the top of other blocks, unfortunately, the system does not delete the initial block. So we end up with double blocks. The confusion with that is that the assigner is not really sure which block is accurate. So it makes his job very difficult to try to figure out what you can and what you cannot work. My recommendation is that anytime you are going to change your blocks, rather than blocking over the top, simply clear the blocks for that day completely and then restart your blocking process for that day, that week, that month, that time period. The next piece I want to cover is over here in the travel limits tab. You may or may not have access to the travel limits tab all the time. Sometimes that is turned on early in the year and then turned off. In the travel limits tab, you'll be able to change what we call your leave from zip code. You can set this day by day, just like you do blocks, so that you can tell your assigner that on any given day where you leave from, from a zip code. If you leave every day, Monday through Friday from work, and your work zip code is 23112, you can type 23112, you can click Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you can click apply, and it will change your leave from zip code to that zip code from which you leave. What this does is it allows the system to be able to calculate how long it takes you to get from where you're leaving from to where the system is trying to send you for a game. This is why in your blocks, you want to put the, your blocks such that it, you're telling the system what time you can leave from work or what time you can leave from home so that it then represents and calculates how long it's going to take you to get to a location. The system requires that you get to a location no less than 30 minutes before the scheduled game time and based on the zip code that you're leaving from to the zip code that you're going to, it will calculate an approximate travel time. The next tab that we want to talk about is right here. This is the lists tab. Under the lists tab, it will give you a list of all of the officials in the association. Um, it will give you their name, it will show you their email address, and if you click on any particular individual, it'll give you some pertinent information. This is helpful when you have a game assignment with someone and you need to contact them. One other important thing that you need to understand is appending games. As you'll see here, there is a light blue square on my August 7th, which if you look over here, indicates me that there is a pending game. My assigner has put me into a game, but I don't know where it is yet. That's called a pending game. It has not been published. If I click on that light blue square, it'll tell me that within ODUA, they have assigned me a pending game that begins at five o'clock. If you'll notice, there are no blocks indicated here. So my assigner has given me an assignment based on my blocks for the 7th of August. 
on the assigner screen, he knows exactly when he put me into that game. So if for some reason, the 7th of August is a day that I can't work, and I see that blue assignment, and I go over here and I decide, you know, I'm going to block that day. You'll see that I now show that I'm blocked, but the square is still light blue. You cannot block over a pending game. When it's published, the pending game will still show up. Another thing you'll notice is that if I put my mouse over the top of the pending game, there's a little pop-up that shows up that says pending game. That's what I see. If I put my little mouse over the top of that, it tells me exactly when I blocked that day. On the assigner's screen, the assigner can see exactly when that block went into place. It can also see exactly when he assigned you that game. So you can't come back and say that, well, I was blocked when the game was assigned. No, you weren't, and he knows that. So that's just a generally bad practice to get into. Make sure your blocks are up to date and your assignments will come accordingly. I can assure you that no assigner will assign over the top of your blocks without contacting you first. In the case of an emergency or something, they may send out an email, they may call you, you never know, but they will not assign you a game over the top of an existing block. When a new game is published, I will get an email like you see here. It'll come from Arbiter Sports and it'll say, you have new games from ODUA. Likewise, you may get an email that says, that your partner was unassigned. You may get an email that says you've been unassigned. You may also get an email that says there's been a change to a game. In any case, there are a lot of reasons why you may be unassigned from a game. If a game is changed to a day that you're blocked, you will become unassigned. If it changes to a time period that does not allow you to get there in time, you may be unassigned. If you're unassigned from a game, it's probably nothing that you did wrong. So don't think that there's a reason for uh, you being punished or anything like that. Sometimes things just happen and you get unassigned. When you get an email or a text message saying you have a new game, then you need to go back into Arbor Sports, click on the schedule, and you'll see a yellow highlighted line somewhere on your schedule. As it sits right now, I cannot click any of the link right here on the game site. I need to hit schedule again or hit refresh and that'll change white and now I can see that I have been assigned to a game at Atlee High School on August the 7th and once I click schedule it will show that I have accepted that game. Again, I do not have the ability to decline a game because the assignment was made based on the fact that I told my assigner through my blocks that I was available. That means that I am available and I am willing to go work that game because I'm not blocked. We want to make sure that we contact our partners a minimum of 48 hours ahead of game time, if at all possible, certainly within 24 hours. If you have not contacted your partner, 24 hours ahead of game time, or your partner has contacted you, you need to send an email to the ODUA assigner email address and let the assigner know that you have not made any contact with your partner. You should try a phone call, text message, email, try all possible methods before that time frame and before you contact the assigner. Also within the list tabs, like I said, here it is the officials. Uh, you can see the association officers. Those are all the, uh, the leadership, elected leadership in our association. You can also see um, a list of contacts, sites, teams, and most importantly, the forms menu. The forms menu has a lot of pertinent information uh, that you'll find here. Um, policies and procedures documents, the UDP handbook, which you all should have a copy of anyway, um, some three-man mechanics, the Babe Ruth rule book, 
uh, there's a, a variety of things in here. If we say you'll find it on the forms menu, that's exactly where we're looking. It's under lists and forms, and there'll be a link to it here. As this says right here, if you are not an email guy, then I would highly recommend you download the app that is suitable for your device, whether it's Google or Apple. You can get to your App Store or Google Play and you can download the Arbiter Sports app. You can download the Arbiter Mobile app um, through Android or Apple, as I mentioned, but you can get text messages as well as emails um, by going to your profile, as you can see here, clicking on preferences, and then you should see your email address and your phone. Make sure that all of these are checked so that you will get a text message and an email when anything happens to your schedule. If you get a new game, if your game changes, if you're invited to a new event, if anything changes, if anything's deleted, if anything's canceled, you will get a notification. Sometimes, as with technology and phones, you may not get a text message right away, but the email come through. Or you may not get an email, but the text message will come through. I would highly recommend that you sign up for both so that you have a redundant means of being contacted as games change. The links to download the apps, again, are on Apple and Google Play. If you click on Help, It'll come up with a question box here to open a new screen, and you can type, type in the Arbiter mobile app. What will come up is a, you'll find an article here how to download the Arbiter mobile app for Apple and Android. If you click on that, here's the instructions on how to get it through iOS. There's a link right there. Or here's the Android process. I'm sure you know how to download apps. That's what the icon looks like. It's an A and an S. Once again, the absolute most important thing about being able to umpire is being able to manage your schedule and your life in Arbiter Sports. Um, again, blocks will define when you do not get games. You will not get assigned games over the top of a block. You will not be guaranteed to get in game if you're available, but it certainly tells the assigner that you are ready, willing, and able to work the game on that day. Once you're assigned, you're not able to pick and choose or decline. Assignments are made according to your blocks, and once it's assigned, that's what it is. When we get into the spring, which really is anything after the 1st of February until uh, the end of June, you really need to check Arbiter twice a day, at a minimum. You should check it when you wake up in the morning, and you should check it before you leave for a game or before you go to bed. It is not uncommon, especially when it starts raining in the spring, that what assignment you had when you went to bed is not the same assignment that you'll have when you wake up in the morning. Or where you thought you were going when you left for work isn't where you're going by the time you leave work at 3 in the afternoon or whatever time you leave. So I would highly recommend that you sign in twice a day at a minimum, morning and afternoon, morning and evening. And again, if email isn't your thing, that's fine. Get the Arbiter mobile app and, sign, and, uh, and uh, click all of that. It used to cost about $6 a year. I actually don't believe that there's a cost for it anymore. So get the app, get the text messages and emails, make life easy on you, make life easy on your assignment. If you make life easy on your assigner, I can almost assure you it will turn into a benefit for you. That's a fairly quick explanation of the critical elements of Arbiter. Um, there is also a need help button over here on the far upper right hand side. Uh, as with most web pages, there is a help session, helps help process in here. You can click that. Um, and there's various tutorials, there's information, uh, there's searches, you can ask the question, there's video, there's all kinds of things in here. So there's also, um, this, would, this can be very important and very helpful uh, as well. Like here, for example, top articles, how to block dates and times, blocking sites, uh, your welcome email, 
how to set up Arbiter Pay. That's how you get paid, all that kind of thing. So there's a wealth of information in the Arbiter Help. And I hope that we've been able to give you a very quick explanation of Arbiter itself. Folks, I, I, can't, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to, to check Arbiter and be in contact with the Arbiter process if you're going to umpire. You can be the worst umpire in the world, but if you can navigate Arbiter and you can be available and you can accept game assignments, we'll find a game for you. On the flip side, you can be the very best umpire, but if you cannot manage your blocks and you don't check Arbiter and you become an administrative nightmare to deal with, it's very, very hard to get you on a field. You have to be able to keep up with the administrative side. I hope that this presentation has been helpful and gives you a little bit of information and insight on how to navigate through the Arbiter. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us and look for our next video coming up soon.